Hey there, it's Nicola Milan and this is Singer's Secret TV, where you'll get professional advice for improving your singing and making it as a singer. Now singing in tune is one of the most vital things that you can do as a singer to sound good. Now the reason is, is because as you're singing, you are singing one note out of a chord, which means there are generally three other notes that are playing simultaneously. And what you want to do is sing the correct note out of that chord and if your note is either flat or sharp then it's not going to sound good. So singing in tune or on pitch as we term it in musician speak means that you're hitting the note in the middle of that note exactly and when you do hit it exactly right it kind of almost pings because it sounds the best. Now Singing out of tune means you're either flat or sharp. Now generally most singers, if they're not singing on pitch, sing flat. So um, to sing flat means you're just below the note. So if this is my note, la, to sing flat means you're la, it's actually really hard to do, <laughs> la, so you're just slightly below. Or if you're singing sharp, which is less common, it means you're just slightly over. So again, this is our note, la, and you would be la, so just slightly over that note. Um, and it, what it means is it just makes the whole thing sound a little bit out. So if you're singing out of tune, and we're gonna address mainly singing flat because it is the most common problem for singers, um, this can occur for three reasons. Number one, there's not enough airflow going on. Number two, there's not enough space in your mouth. And number three, you need to work on your hearing. So let's break this down. So number one, not enough airflow. Now this comes back down to diaphragmatic breathing, but not only having enough air within your instrument, but also expelling that air. So exhaling and having enough air coming through to support the notes that you're singing. Now essentially as a singer, you are a wind instrument, which means that you need air for your instrument to work. And what happens is your vocal folds are sitting up here and as air rushes through, they vibrate, which helps cause the sound. Now if you're not you know, having enough airflow coming through, then your instrument can't do what it needs to do and work properly. So a really simple remedy for this is to sigh, <laughs> because when we sigh, we are naturally using a lot of airflow and we're very, very relaxed. So just have a go and see what I mean. So we're going to do a sigh together. So take a deep breath in and just let it all out like that and feel that sensation of, of how much airflow is coming out of your instrument when you sigh. That time I added a little bit of a tone, and feel free to do this after I've done it. Now I'm gonna extend that sigh a little bit. <sighs> very relaxed, very, very easy, very natural. Singing should be very natural. And then let's extend it a little bit further. <sighs> ah, feels good. <laughs> okay. So that's one of the ways that you can work on improving your airflow and improving your pitch in the process. So just have a go. After, you can pause this video if you need to or do it afterwards. Start sighing, keeping it natural, and then start extending that sigh. And just do this exercise uh, you know, a few times before you commence your singing practice because what it will do is it will help you to start forming this good vocal habit of having enough airflow. So let's have a look at number two, reason number two now, which was not having enough space in your mouth. Now, if you've ever been into a cathedral or a room where it's got a really big high ceiling and it's very spacious, and when you go in there, have you ever noticed that the sound is always really full and resonant and it usually sounds quite nice? Well, the same goes for your voice as an instrument. You've got to think of your mouth and your head as a big cathedral. So it's a big resonance chamber. And what you want to do is to make sure that you have as much space and as much height 
for the ceiling of your cathedral as possible to improve not only your sound quality but also your pitch. Now a lack of space in the mouth can usually, is usually caused by number one having a lazy tongue and number two by having a lowered soft palate. Now if you don't know what the soft palate is, it's the fleshy bit. If you use your tongue on the roof of your mouth and you go backwards, it's the fleshy bouncy bit at the very back of your mouth. That's your soft palate. And what you want to do is to make sure your soft palate is raised up as high as possible, which will improve your sound quality and your pitch. In order to start getting the right feeling for the, for the extra space in your mouth, when you yawn, you naturally raise your soft palate. So have a go at yawning now. <sighs> okay, it's, when you do that, feel the stretch that you get inside your mouth. Now that's the placement that you want to try and maintain while you sing, and it will improve everything. Uh, one exercise that you can do, as well as yawning to get that feeling going, is by going posh with everything that you say. So, uh, what's the saying? How now, brown cow? <laughs> uh, I think I watched this on The Nanny once like this is quite a few years ago and she was going how oh, no brown cow because i don't know if you watch the nanny she's got that really um i can't remember what where, where she's from brooklyn or something like that but she's got that really um harsh accent and um mr sheffield is english and he's got that really posh accent so she was trying to do the whole posh thing <laughs> anyway um if you use those sorts of words it will help you to raise this soft palate and it does improve your tongue placement as well because a lazy tongue has all got to do with your use of vowels and depending on which language you speak or which kind of accent that you have some people will have a lazier tongue than others uh, I know that Australians have a very lazy tongue and it's because in Australia we slang everything we shorten everything and we're, we're just lazy speakers and we don't open our mouths enough so um, one thing that I get all of my singing students to do is to go really, really posh with their singing and it does help. And lastly, our third reason was that you need to improve your musical hearing. Now in musical terms, we call this your ears. You need to develop good musical ears. And if you develop your hearing as a singer, not only will you sing more accurately on pitch, because even if you do sing on pitch, there's a difference between hitting right in the middle of the note and being ever so slightly out. Um, and improving your musical hearing will help you get that note where it's right in the centre and it pings because it sounds so nice because you're right in the middle. Um, plus it will make you a more versatile singer because you will be able to sing vocal harmony, which means you'll be able to work in a cappella groups or in in bands, you could work as a backing singer if you can do harmony and it just expands your musical appreciation as well because it means you'll be able to listen deep into the music and ignore the vocals and listen in and hear all the other different parts that are going on in the music. So improving your musical ears is a fantastic thing for any singer to embark on. Now, if you're new to the whole musical hearing thing, I have already done a video for you which has got a really simple uh, ear training exercise that you can use and you can watch that video here. So that in a nutshell is how to sing on pitch. Number one, get your breathing and airflow down pat. Number two, get as much space in your mouth as possible. And number three, improve your musical hearing and your pitch will improve. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please hit that like button and make sure you subscribe because I do put up new videos all the time and you don't want to miss out. And also, if you would like more free professional advice for improving your singing and making it as a singer, head on over to my website, singersecret.com and make sure you hop onto my email list because I do put extra singing tips and secrets into my emails that I do not share anywhere else and you don't want to miss out. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Nicola Milan and I'll talk to you again soon.